hey there, it's Angus with a part two. Um, what I wanted to add was to say that once you've um, got a short list of stocks, then you know you can either look at the pre-market or wait till the market opens to see which way the stocks are likely to run. Um, you can go through and you know change your criteria, you know change your filters at the top to reduce the number of matches if you've got too many. And you can obviously also um, change exchanges, so you know it doesn't matter what exchange you're on, um, you know this will still work. Um, it'll still give you an idea around. Um, earnings, you know, when particular stocks have earnings, you know, which which way they, you know, may or may not go. Um, obviously, with more US stocks and, you know, earnings periods will be different. Um, you know, you've, you've just got to wait for that earnings period before it'll, um, before it'll help make sense. But one of the ones that I wanted to show you that I'll often change is if you change your candle type, you change it from a um, normal candles to the, I don't know how you say it, but high can ashy. Um, they tend to take out some of the noise. And so the theory of, you know, you know, this is just my really dumb way of looking at these candles is um, green typically means an uptrend and, you know, you know, two, two or more, you know, look for two or three candles, in, you know, green in a row means an uptrend, two or three red in a row mean more of a downtrend. Um, as I said, it sounds really dumb, but you can see that if I just sort of switch between the two, you know, it's sort of a bit choppy through here. I switch back to this candle, you know, which is effectively an average type candle yep, this one here um, then you know you, it reduces some of that noise so you know it, it's just an easier way perhaps to you know look at stocks and see you know a couple of greens in a row strong uptrend a couple of reds you know a bit more of a downtrend but the thing that I always get asked is you know how do you know when to sell you know where do you put your stop losses and that sort of thing with these stocks that are more likely to be you know spiking type stocks you can see they've got you know big highs big lows um, if I turn on my little toolbar, I can sort of say from the bottom of that, you know, let's go to the bottom of that candle there to the top of that candle there. That was a 15% swing during that one day. So from there to there on that candle was roughly 15%. Um, if I look at this, you know, last day candle here, oh, uh, yeah, move down, yeah. So again, that was roughly a 20%, you know, probably a bit less, but, you know, 17% swing on that one day, you know, all the way from its, open to its top was you know roughly 17 percent um that pullback that sort of short wick there and you, know, you could say was roughly five percent so um the easy way that i do it is i will normally set my stop loss my initial stop loss to about five percent below my buy price so um somewhere between five and seven percent so i would probably set my stop loss you know around about that level there um what's that 16.39 or um, I'll set it below the, um, the the previous day's candle. So, you know, just by coincidence, you know, it's just in the same spot. So um, if I go back up to parts, let's pretend that I, you know, bought it at the open somewhere around here. Um, I'd say, well, my stop loss, if I click on this, and I say roughly 5% below, you know, pretend it's around there, whatever it is, you know, $13, 15 or something, I'd set it around there or I'd set it below the previous day's candle. So you're just basically trying to avoid stocks that run up or, you know, sort of fake you out and then they drop back. And so, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I've only got a small downside. And of course, I've got quite significant upside if I can get it. And then all I then do is, you know, if I'm, if I'm sitting here during the day watching one of these stocks, you know, rocket up, I'll just, you know, steadily move my stop loss up manually um, until I can, uh, you know, you know, keep that trade. You know, that's how I sort of look at it. Um, if I go to my trading panel, I can't actually log in because then you get to see all my username and password. But um, if you've if you're trading using um, you know the internal trading view screener, then you can move your little um, you know you can manually move your little buys and sells up on the chart. And it's a really cool way of doing it. But again, I've made another video on that. Um, you know, on YouTube, there's a trade station video where I can sort of show you how I can move my stop losses up and down. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to add. So, you know, stop loss roughly 5% below my buy price or below the, you know, candle of the previous day. And then as I'm trading, I'll move my stop up. You know, these are these are much more short-term trades. I'm really looking for these stocks that can spike, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40% in a single day. Um, and if they keep, you know, moving up, I just keep manually moving my stop loss up. 
you know, it's much harder to use a trailing sell with these sort of stocks just because, you know, there's so much you know, volatility off this, um, this earnings. You know, if I flick through here, I've only got 24, 25, but, you know, it looks interesting, looks interesting. You know, some of these you wouldn't want to chase, but you can see, you know, if you keep an eye on that little red E, and it's really interesting to see, you know, some of these stocks making these big explosive moves. I do like these ones that are nice and steady, but you can see here, you know, his RSI is 88. So I'd look at that and think, geez, that's, that seems like it's very expensive. So I'd, I'd probably expect a bit of a pullback. Um, but, you know, anyone watching this video, you'll be able to see, you know, what, what happens to these over the next few days and, you know, make up your own mind. As I said, I'll always wait for the market to open before I work out which way I want to, you know, go. Um, but it's... um. It's kind of cool. You can see that they're making these fairly big moves, you know, around these earnings. You know, it's the second day, just to see what, which way it goes. But it's um, it's good. You know, if you can jump on it, see that one's you know beautiful compression through there. So you know it was going to be a fairly explosive move. So you know, if I if I look at the bottom of that closing price there, and I go up to pretend up the top there, you know, someone would have picked up you know a sixty percent gain off that one. So, you know, these are the type of stocks that you're looking at. You know, they're just nuts. You know, this one here, again, it's, you know, it's not one that I, I probably would have picked up. But, you know, that move, well, it tells you there, you know, that move was 35%. Well, again, it tells you here, you know, just to be redundant. But, you know, someone's gone up 20%. You know, the next one, you know, 11.6%. So it's kind of interesting, you know. I'd, I'd like to see, you know, these sort of big, big moves. And as I said, it, it's it's um it's interesting, you know. It's uh, it's it's quite interesting. But I do like to wait the day or so after earnings, just to make sure that it's not going to pull back and then go back up. But you know, you can you can put in a um you know you can put in a, a, a trade. You can have a stop sitting there, and you can say, you know, this one here, it's nineteen dollars fifty. If it goes up to I don't know, nineteen dollars sixty. I'll buy it. You know, I'll I'll put a trade in there. You know, nineteen dollars sixty, and you know, if if it heads up that way, then you know, I, I get to take advantage of it. You know, this one here, it sort of went up, closed down, didn't really do much. Um, you know, they're all kind of interesting, as I said, if you're flicking through, and you know, it's a super super easy way to trade. Um, you can imagine that if your stop loss is set at around five percent. And, you know, some of the potential upside of these, like if I, if I actually go back up here and I saw it on the change, you know, it's always wonderful being able to look at things in hindsight, but, you know, that's at a 40% upside, you know, after earnings, um, you know, 35%. So if my stop loss is set at around um, 5% and I'm, you know, potentially getting a few of these 35 40% runners, then it means that I don't have to have you know, too many wins versus losses. You know, my, my win to loss ratio, you know, I'm making this up because I don't know what it is, but pretend I, I, I win 50% and I lose 50%. If I've only got a 5% downside and, you know, typically I've got a 10 to 15% upside and that's only over one or two days, you know, if I let it run for a while, some people will say set your stop loss um, below the um, the 20-day moving average, so the middle Bollinger Band. Um you know, I said I, I, I'm more chasing these because I want to try and, you know, get the maximum amount of profit out of it. So I just keep chasing them up as the as the chart moves up. So anyway, as always, I hope that was kind of helpful. Um, it's interesting, you know, you um, you can always trade stocks different ways, but I like the idea that there's some sort of news, there's some sort of unusual volume, um, and there's some sort of unusual change in the price. And I like the idea of using Bollinger Bands where I can see you know, those explosive moves, you know, the Bollinger Bands opening up as volatility opens up. You know, the moving average tells you, you know, which way the stock's trending. You know, the RSI tells you whether you've got momentum, whether you've got value. You know, that one's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good, simple way that I like to trade. Um, but, you know, as always, there's a million ways of doing things, and this is just one of them that I like when I'm trying to um, pick these more, you know, interesting stocks. And as a, as a very last thing, because I know I keep getting distracted, but if I go sector, I add in sector, um, and I shrink down that one, and I move across to sector. Some people like, you know, I, I like, I, I've got this idea that, you know, your discovery based stocks are the ones that are most likely to rocket. So if you click on sector and you start to go down through here, and you might say, 
um, show me um, health technology, so all my biotechs, and show me, um, I don't know, technology type businesses, um, anything that's sort of a discovery where they're going to, you know, on some sort of deal or earnings deal or, you know, something that's interesting that sort of happens to them, you know, electronic technology. Um, and, you know, that might be another way of you filtering down, you know, your list if you've got too many stocks that you're looking at. So, um, you know, these are stocks that, you know, are, are likely to run just because, you know, they're in those sort of really hot spaces. Um, I just thought I'd share that and that's the last thing that I shall add to this. So as always, thank you for listening.